Hello, everyone. I'm Allison Hagendorf, and I am so excited to be here tonight to virtually hang with my friends from Brazil, Ego Kill Talents. Now, I met the guys a few years ago when they were in Los Angeles recording at Studio 606. And tonight, I'll be chatting with them for a bit prior to the band's Danny Wimmer Presents offstage exclusive performance of their virtual show live on the flat screen. Joining me now are Ego Kill Talent from their recording studio in Sao Paulo. Please welcome Jonathan, Theo, Nieper, Rafa, and John. Hey. What's up, guys? Yeah. Wow, you are really sure. good. You are really good. <laughs> I feel so honored. So yeah, yeah, I feel like, wow, I mean something. Yeah. <laughs> Well, as you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan, so I'm excited to be here Thank with you, you guys you so tonight. Much. Thank you. I'm really excited about tonight because for many fans, this performance might be the introduction from mm -hmm. you guys to them. So why don't we start by giving a little bit of a background <coughs> about the band and how you guys met and formed Ego Kill Talent. Well, okay. So back in 2014, I guess, right? Uh, Jean, I mean, we all are friends for many, many years. Uh, me and Rafa, we go back over 20 years. Um, know Jonathan for like 16, 17 years. And actually what happened was Jean, he used to play on Sepultura, right? And then he left Sepultura and he called me. We went for a coffee and we were talking and then Jean was like, okay, what, what have you been doing? And at that moment, I remember I wasn't playing guitar at all. I was kind of a little uh, tired of, of a lot of aspects of the music business and all that. And then Jan was like, are you crazy? Let's jam, you know, we gotta, you know, this is not healthy for you. <laughs> so we just, <laughs> to, make, to make a long story short, we started uh, to jam. And then, then at some point we were like, okay, I think this is, this is gonna be a, a real band, you know? Uh, we always shared a lot with each other about the challenges in life. And usually you are your biggest challenge. <laughs> so we, we were like, okay, we should look for a name that kind of, of say that, you know, that, that would be like a statement, like a reminder for ourselves and, and, and something that we, it rings true to us. And that was how we came up with the name. But we didn't have a singer yet. And I was like, I know this one guy here in Brazil that he can nail this. And you, yeah, <laughs> I'm a big fan of Jonathan for many years already. Thank you, man. So we called him, we showed you the songs and we were like, we, we really connected, and then a week later you came with melodies and some lyrics ideas. Yeah, yeah. He sent like he sent us like a a, a, a melody for something we made it. Yeah. He recorded on the yeah recorded on the shower, I guess. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I yeah. yeah. I remember could listen to the shower going on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want it to That's picture true. that. I was like, <laughs> let me focus on the sound. I you got know? I, I got the video. Yeah, yeah. I, don't send me the video. <laughs> We were talking earlier, and Rafa, you revealed that you and Theo actually met at a Metallica show, yes. and I know you are the biggest Metallica fan ever. You noticed yes. the shirt that I'm wearing right off the bat. Yeah. So tell me, tell me how you guys met. I really like, walk us through that day. Yeah, that's a good story, actually. We, we met without knowing we met. Yeah, <laughs> because uh, after that's humanity. Yeah. 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 Because uh, the, the show was in Rio. So after the show, uh, I went to this gas station. I, I was with the Lars Zurich uh, drumstick that I, I got in, in the show. And this guy approached me and said, oh man, you got the, got the drumstick, that's really cool, let me see it. And it was Theo. Yeah. And I just uh, found that out. Uh, yeah, but, but the, the, here's the a crazy year. thing. Here's a crazy thing. Because and then that happened, right? And we never saw each other again. So you fast forward like a year or two. And I went to that to a record store in Rio. I, I, I was going there to put an ad, like looking for a drummer, because I had a band, I was missing a drummer. And then w when I got in the store, Metallica had just released the uh, SM1. And, wow. and then I just, I, I was like holding the, the, the ad in my hand. And then when I saw like the poster of the album or something, it was just like to, like to the owner of the store. I said, Is it good? And, and then Rafa jumps in the conversation and said, Oh, it's amazing. You know? <laughs> You have to buy it. You have to buy it. If you don't have it, buy it right now. And I think it was I think it was released like a day, the day before and Rafa already had it and he was already there to buy another one. But I don't know why. I don't know why he needed another one. But and then we Why were you owning multiple topics? Yeah. Exactly. And then we were we were like talking and like talking for an hour and and then I go, Do you play an instrument? And he goes like, Yeah, I play drums. And I remember I didn't even 
put the ad on, on, on the wall. I just gave it to him. I said, wow. here it is, man. You are in my band. You know, we have a band. <laughs> One of the really cool, unique things about the band and the thing that fans love is that you guys switch instruments yeah. <laughs> in the middle of performances, including two drummers. I mean, that's yeah. wild. Is this something you always planned on doing? No, there, there wasn't take a it. plan. Yeah, actually, uh, when Rafa yeah. joined the band, we we yeah. were we weren't looking for another drummer. Yeah. We, we already had the drummer, and then Rafa was like, "I want to join the band," and I remember telling him, "Say, man, I love you. You are one of the best drummers I know." But we already have Jean on the drums, and he goes like, "I don't care. I can play I, bass." I play bass, yeah. And and so <laughs> so he joined the band to play bass until one day Jean came in, came in the studio with a guitar, and he he was like, "I have this riff idea." Rafa, do you care to sit in the drums just so we can write this song? And then we played like that for like three, four hours. Yeah. And and then we were like, we should just, you know, perform this song. Because then Rafael went to the drums, I went to the bass, and Jean, he, he was just playing the guitar. And then we, we wrote that song on that lineup. And we were like, you know what? It sounds really good like this. Let's keep this song like this. And then that was the beginning. Then we, we opened the Pandora box because, yeah. you know, now when we write a song, we don't really know who's going to play what until we, we are going to record it. And it's crazy. And that's yeah. one of the coolest things. Yeah, right? keep yeah. It, because it, it keeps brings, it fresh. Yeah, so, and it's so rich for the composition too, you know, like when you're writing something and you're not on your instrument, like I'm, if I'm playing the guitar, I'm thinking like completely different yeah. than I would yeah. be if I was, you know, playing the drums. So it happens like completely different and it's really, really yeah. amazing. Yeah. 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 What's also impressive is to talk about some of your first tours, by the way, which yeah. included opening for Foos, Queens of the Stone Age, System of a Down. Like, how did that come about that some of your very first tours were for, I don't know, some of the biggest bands yeah. in the world? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. Pretty remarkable. We became friends with uh, with Serge and John before we had the band. Actually, John Domayan, the drummer, he came to Sao Paulo. And then yeah. he came here and he didn't know that, that we had a band. And it was like, I have a surprise for you. And he was like, what? I said, I'm driving you to, to my studio. And he went, what? Do you have a studio? I said, yeah, now I do. And I have a band and I want to play it for you. And he was like, oh man, if it's shit, I'm gonna tell right into your face. Because John is a, he's, that guy. he's that guy. He's like, I'm, I, I won't sugarcoat it, man. If it sucks, I will say it sucks in front of your friends. I will say, it's okay, John. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, not a problem, you know. I want your honest opinion and I, I know I'll get it, you know. And then we played for him like three songs. And he was like, hmm, can you play that one again? And then it was like, okay, we are safe. You know, if he wanted to listen to it again, he liked it. So when we played again, and then he just, he really got into it. And he was like, I think you guys have something real here. Yeah. And he was really supportive. Uh, and so with System of a Down, the relationship was developing from, from, from that moment. And he was always like, and him and Serge, they were always like, anything you need from us, you can count on us. And John, he was like a real, a real supporter since, since day one. Yeah. So that was how it came uh, to happen, you know, that, that we played with, with System in France. Uh, we did a few shows with them. It was amazing. And the Foos, that was another one. Huh? Yeah. That yeah. was another that we could not believe. Um, well, basically, it was a combination of the, the Foo Fighters Brazilian fan club. It's the biggest Foo Fighters fan club in the world. And, like, the, the, the president of the fan club, the, the guy is also a big fan of ours. He said to the Foo's management that that he think we should be the support band for the tour. But I remember exactly when we got the call because I was with Rafa. We were having lunch, and yeah. we we had just played Rock and Rio, and we were like already we were really happy because we got we got great reviews from the Rock and Rio show. So we were like walking in clouds, you know. Hey, it was amazing. It was literally the 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 day after, the, the day after yeah. And then I got a phone, my phone start, starts ringing and it was LA, I, I knew it was a LA number. I picked the phone and then someone just got, is this Theo Vanderloo? And I'm like, yes, I got John Silva for you. I said, okay. <laughs> Silva goes like, hey Theo, I said, yeah, wh what are you doing in these dates? And then he just told me like five <laughs> dates. I'm like, I'm doing whatever you want me to do. <laughs> uh, Good answer. Yeah, and Good then answer. he goes like, yeah, because I might, I might put you on, on the Fool's Tour. 
And I was like, I would love that. And, and he said, but I don't think I can give you the Sao Paulo day. They never told us that we were doing Sao Paulo. We learned from the but announcement. you found out the same time everyone else found yes, out. Yes, exactly. We were, we were in Chile. We were in Chile filming, yeah. shooting the video for, for Last Ride when yeah. we got, yeah, got we the news. Through yeah. the Twitter. And I feel like the good fortune keeps continuing. Then we have Foos offering their studio, 606, for you guys to record in. Yeah. I mean, what a special, rare opportunity that was. What was that experience like? I don't like, even know how to put that in words, yeah. man. I mean, since since the beginning when we got there, you know, looking the walls and all those those records, you know, yeah. gold records and yeah, the console history. Yeah, the, the console. The vibe, the, the overall vibe is just amazing. It's just and amazing. amazing. Just being yeah. on that room, is yeah. Just, yeah, fantastic. Now, prior to the pandemic, you guys had like. 35 shows booked, 20 festivals. There was a South American arena tour with Metallica yeah. and Greta Van Fleet and, and <laughs> Dates with System and Blues. And, you know, ah. Danny Wimmer said you guys were the band to see and you were going to play Sonic Temple and the list goes on and on. So, firstly, we're remaining hopeful that these dates will happen at some points, getting yeah. us all through it to yeah. look ahead yeah. to the light. Yes. But how are you dealing with this waiting period and how are you still connecting with fans in the interim uh when when we learned that i mean that this was going on with the world and that nobody's going to tour soon we were like okay we need to find a way to connect to the people and and deliver somehow the live performance and so we shot the live on a flat screen which uh it was like six or seven different sets all filmed here in our studio uh and we came up with this idea of making like a virtual tour, you know, that different sets for different nights. So that was a way we found to connect. And we were really lucky to play a drive-in show with Bob Burnquist uh, like three weeks ago. And that was, it was like, it was like a, uh, some yeah. so yeah. good. It was so see. good. But you had just mentioned before that because of the pandemic, you also are changing the way you're putting out the new music. So talk mm -hmm. to me a little bit about that about how you have this first EP and how it's going to be part of a, a series. Okay, uh, well, in the beginning, uh, when we had the Metallica tour line and the Danny Wimmer festivals, we were planning to release the first single during the Metallica tour in March and then release the full album when we were playing the U.S. dates on the Danny Wimmer festivals. And when we finally realized that, okay, there won't be touring in 2020, then we decided to, instead of just release the full album at once, we decided to slice it in three mm -hmm. EPs. And like the, the name of the album is The Dance Between Extremes. And th that name came before the COVID thing. So, but wow. yeah, it was really <laughs> yeah. The songs too. <laughs> the songs too, yeah. And then we decided the first, the first EP was gonna be called The Dance, the second one, The Dance Between, and the third one, The Dance Between Extremes, which, yeah, which with the other, the, it's, it makes the full album. I also wanna talk about the video for The Call. Wow, guys, and, and the use of the QR code to, to you know, go into more of the character development pieces. That's so interesting. Just tell me more about that. Thank you. Well, we we wanted it. We want if if you look at uh, the other video that we released before that. Now, it also have the QR codes there, and the third one, we will also have it. What we wanted was to create a universe where you can connect dots while you are watching it develop. Right. So it's like the character in, in the call video. Uh, it's it's a story of a character that is learning. Uh, to let go of his grievances. Uh, he used to be a biker, a pro biker, and he still suffers because, I mean, life, I mean, he was dancing between the extremes, right? One day he was like this best of the world, like almost the champion, and next day he got an accident, he can't bike anymore. So we we were like, okay, how can we develop the character uh, in the, but without Taking, getting the flow of the of the video because it's a music video in the end. So the QR codes take you to different moments of his uh, story. So if you if you if you put the QR code there, you're gonna learn more about the character. Yeah, it goes a little deeper. It goes a little uh, deeper. Yeah. Story. yeah. And we're the gonna have the same thing on the next one. Yeah. I know. I watched the videos. Yeah. I mean, the part with him and his daughter Grace. Yeah. Just, you know, getting from her perspective and. Oh, it's gonna wow. be more of that coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow is all I can say about that because I don't want to give it away for anyone who hasn't seen it, but it's just very emotional, very powerful. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. What is something that you want to say to fans? You know, I know that we're trying to connect as much as we can with these performances and stuff, but just what is something that you want to 
connect with Inseta fans until you're able to physically see them again. I can only think we miss you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be, be well, you know, and, and be in love as much as you can. Let's grow together from this and be together yeah. again soon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Well, guys, thank you so much for hanging with me. Thank you. Thank you. I'm obviously a huge fan, and I can't wait for the rest of the world to discover you and love you the way that we already yes. do. Thank you so thank much. You. I'm Alex Hagendorf, and this is live on the flat screen from Ego Kill Talent. Enjoy.
now what you found you were before it's gone where the sound of all the crowd to be on the road man we definitely love to be on the road you know in 2020 we were supposed to be on a world tour playing stadiums with metallic and grid and fleet in south america playing arenas in europe with system of a down playing the most iconic festivals on the planet. It will be a hell of a summer. But everything changed.
Curious. I never seen that in a concert. It's always great when they all start to mix instruments. 
that I liked the most about uh, the performance that they had. Every time, every song, they were switching the, the, the characters in every instrument. I definitely enjoyed all the moves they had together with the, uh, well, the jumping and everything. The most crazy thing was when they changed uh, instruments, the drama got the bass and all the things, so yeah, it was fucking amazing. <laughs> so I, I love, I just love it, it's, it's, it's a complete set. And that one was a lot of energy, I loved it very much and I hope to see them soon. working on Lifeborn, we used to call it Samba because of the pattern of the riff, which reminds of a Samba groove. An interesting thing about this one is that we didn't have the chorus up until the day we tracked drums. We wrote it right there in the studio. And it ended up being one of the catchiest choruses in the album.
Ego Kill Talent here on live, all the way from Brazil. Ego Kill Talent desde Brasil, el primer y único mosh del día. Over 40 million streams since the release of the first album in 2017. Having played for over 700,000 people over the last couple years, Ego Kill Talent has performed at the largest festivals in Brazil and Europe. And also been fortunate to tour stadiums with the largest premier rock acts, including System of a Down, Foo Fighters, and Queens of the Stone Age. Their shows at Rock in Rio, Lollapalooza Brazil, and Lollapalooza Chile were broadcasted live on TV for millions of viewers, including the Rock in Rio performance, breaking the audience record for the sunset stage. Ego Kill Talent was considered by Google as one of the 20 most relevant new artists of 2017, catching the attention of some worldwide press and celebrities. In 2018, after receiving prominent song features in a couple Brazilian TV series, Ego Kill Talent toured Europe again supporting Shinedown, and also preeminent rock festivals such as Rock em Ring and Rock em Park in Germany, Download Paris in France, Download Madrid in Spain, Grass Pop in Belgium, and Nova Rock in Austria, sharing the bill with Muse, Ozzy Osbourne, Foo Fighters, and Guns N' Roses. Still in 2018, the band was in Europe to tour with Within Temptation, jamming some of the most iconic venues, Brixton Academy, UK O2 Arenas, and the Lazenith in Paris, amongst others. The European press once more referred to Eagle Kill Talent as the next big rock band. Ego Kill Talent was on the top list of the most requested bands on the website festivalinfo.nl, one of the biggest music festival search websites in Holland. It's very, very curious. I never seen that in a concert. It's always great when they all start to mix instruments. What I like the most about uh, the performance that they had, every time, every song, they were switching the, the, the characters in every instrument. The voice was amazing. I definitely enjoyed all the moves they had together with the uh, well, the jumping and everything. The most crazy thing was when they changed uh, instruments. The drama got the bass and all the things. So yeah, it was fucking amazing. <laughs> so I, I love, I just love it. It's 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 a complete set. And I want a lot of energy. I loved it very much, and I hope to see them soon. In January of 2019. The band arrived in Los Angeles, where they spent three months to record their upcoming album at Studio 606, HQ of the Foo Fighters. After the recordings were finished, the band signed worldwide deals with BMG Recordings, C3 Management, and William Morris Endeavor for booking engagements. In the beginning of 2020, the band released three new singles and videos. Now. Lightborn. And the call. Each will be part of the upcoming album release, The Dance Between Extremes. During the pandemic, Ego Kill Talent has recorded live studio sessions in Brazil to release worldwide as a virtual tour, live on the flat screen. When the planet is in a better place, the band will tour worldwide to promote the Dance Between Extremes.